Issue 21 of Volume 2, Swamp Thing, The Anatomy Lesson. This is the issue where Alan Moore takes the Swamp Thing, reboots his origin, introduces the first villain of the new volume, and cleans up some old business. So this is going to run a little longer than I prefer. I want to do all these singlish reviews fairly quickly. But just to give you a little backstory, the origin story is that Alec Holland and his wife, Linda, were working for a government project, working on some type of formula. And uh, some bad guys try to come in and steal the formula and they wouldn't give it up. So they uh, knocked them out and then they left explosives behind. Alec Holland wakes up just before the explosives detonate. Um, they detonate, uh, his wife is killed. He's covered in fire and he runs into the swamp. And the origin is, is that the mixture of the fire and the formula getting on him and running into the swamp transforms his body into that of the swamp around him and he becomes a swamp thing and the whole ongoing underlying story is that alec holland wants to be human again so there's this corporation called the sunderland corporation has been chasing after swamp thing because they want to see if they can get secrets from him as far as his formula goes and the issues up leading up to this they capture him they shoot him in the head they think they kill him and then they freeze him. That's your intro. And you'll see why it's important later. So the story starts off, it's done mostly through narration. And the characters introduced is Jason Woodrow, who is the villain known as the Chloronic Man. He's like a C-level villain. So he's gotten out of jail by the Sunderland Corporation. He's introduced by Avery Sunderland, who's in charge of it. They go to this freezer deep inside his complex his office is almost fully automated and you see the frozen body of what was the swamp thing so his job is to figure out if there's any secrets they can get how he works all that so he starts an autopsy and he's doing the autopsy he's pulling out organs and the organs look like a lungs and a kidney and a spleen whatever but they he says they can't function, they're too coarse, that they look like the, the body parts and the organs, but they don't can't they can't physically function. So he's going through this period of several weeks where he's frustrated because he can't figure out how the swamp thing was able to be a sentient being. Sunderland is giving him a lot of crap. You know, he's telling him, hey man, if you don't get this, he's threatening to put him back in jail. So one night, Woodrow goes back to the lodgings that he's been furnished, takes a shower, and there you see where his fake skin that he like sprays on comes off, and this is what he looks like. Now, Woodrow is like part man, part plant. So he is like a hybrid of both. So when he's taking the shower, he has a eureka moment. Comes back the next day and he explains to Sterling, that there was an experiment in the 1960s using planter worms where they taught a planter worm how to successfully navigate a maze. Then they cut up the planter worm and fed them to other planter worms that never been exposed to the maze or they couldn't make, you didn't know how to get through the maze. And then once they ingested the planter worm pieces, they were able to do the maze. So, and this is an actual, I actually looked it up. This is an actual scientific study that was done in the 60s in the UK and England. Um, Alan Moore is like so thorough that he's not making up these comic book kind of things. He's trying to find like a legitimate study that you can incorporate into his background. So long story short, he says that he starts talking about how um, tribal that knowledge can be passed on by consuming parts of people's bodies. And he says this is why some there's some cannibal tribes that will actually do that with their elders. So Sunderland is like saying, listen, I'm not impressed. So he tells them, okay, let me explain further. He says that it isn't that he transformed into a human being. Alec Holland didn't change physically. He died. His body was went into the swamp and the swamp consumed them. But they consumed him. They were able to somehow um, acquire his mind, his mind. His, uh, I, I guess the sentience, sentience uh, sent, being sentient, 
with Alec Holland's mind, and then Alec Holland's mind, to the best of ability, created the closest thing he could to a human body. So when he explains that to Sunderland, Sunderland's like, okay, well, we can take it from here. Um, you're fired. Yeah, we got other guys, we can do it. You're fired, and we'll work on your resignation. So Woodrow realizes he's been kind of like duped by Sunderland, and he's very egotistic, so he gets mad. So when Sunderland leaves, he's he leaves Woodrow alone with his computer council, and he's very, and Sunderland's very proud of this. He's like, he can manage the whole building by his computer. So Woodrow says, well, he left me alone with his computer, and I knew exactly how it works. So later that evening, when he's in his um, lodgings, you see the swamp thing and you see like a sprout growing and then Woodrow says that he changed the he turned off the frost because he because he said that if Sunderland would have really let him finish he would explain that you can't kill a plant by shooting in the head you can maybe shock it or maybe and you can freeze it but the plant really isn't dead so he turned off the frost so it would grow a new growth Sunderland's walking around, he goes to the freezer and he sees the body, pulls out the uh, compartment where the bias kept, sees where the body is no longer there. You just see some kind of like husks and water. So he runs back to his office and you see the swamp thing there. Now the swamp thing has changed form. Before he was, in the older incarnations, very smooth. He was green, but it wasn't like roots and vines. So Sunderland sees him and he's shocked. And Swamp Thing is fingering the report that Bruder prepared on Alec Holland. And Sutherland asks him, uh, did you read it? And he says, yes, I read it. And he goes, like it? And then the Swamp Thing goes berserk. And Sutherland runs, and the Swamp Thing's chasing after him. And he's chasing him, and I love this, you know, and, and he's chasing him through... Um, his um, building. And what the point that Woodrow makes is that the only thing that kept Swamp Thing going and sane and keeping him sane was the fact that one day he was going to come back to become Alec Holland, but he realized he never was Alec Holland and he never will be Alec Holland. So when um, Sunderland tries to close the doors with his palm, which he showed earlier in this issue, it won't work. And then Woodrow mentions, oh, and I also... Um, change the ability to close the doors. Swamp Thing encounters him, kills Sunderland, and then the end is Woodrow thinking, okay, I have to, you know, and then he runs off and he's wondering, okay, well, Woodrow's thinking, I gotta see if I can find him so I can study him some more. So in 23 pages, Alan Moore retells the origin, changes the origin of the Swamp Thing using actual scientific studies. Sunderland has been a long time villain, like recurring villain in this series. He kills him. And then you realize that what you thought you knew about the Swamp Thing before isn't true. So he does all that in one issue. And this is like your typical superhero story. And that's a little bit more polished because Alan Moore and also you'll see over time that Alan Moore does these three and four issue arcs, three and four issue arcs over and over again, but they all build into a greater story with a great climax around issue 53. So he's talking about, you know, two years worth of stories. But what I liked to hear a lot was the way, like first they show um, this, the, I love the way the rain looks here. Most artists can't draw rain well, very well, but this looks just like if you're staring out a wind, like you're inside, you're staring outside the glass and there's water coming outside. Um, the art here by Stephen Bissett and John Totalbin is excellent. Um, just this nice detail. You didn't see this really in regular comics in the early 80s. I remember being first exposed to this with issue 25 and thinking, oh, man, this is like really different. And you have this whole thing where he's a super, super villain and he sprays himself and all of a sudden you see a plant, but it's done very subtly, you know, cause Sunderland says you have to show, you know, kind of prove who you are and he does it. He doesn't do that whole exposition thing where like, 
yes, I am the Floronic man, and this is my story, and all that kind of thing. Alan Moore just doesn't do that. He just sits here and says, this is who he is. I guess if you want to figure out who he is, if you don't know, then you can find out. But he explains at least who he is, so people who are longtime fans of comics would know. But the Floronic Man is a C-level character, and Swamp Thing at this time is really a C-level character too. Um, Alan Moore's the one that made him like a major player in the DC universe. Um, so you have this really great narration with some dialogue, but it's mostly told with narration with that Alan Moore, um, that that slow, methodical timing, and there's just a lot of sense. Like he's opened up the body. Hey, these organs can't work, so there's a mystery. And then they show him with the spray, without the spray, how he really looks. And he looks quite hard. Like, it's not like he's supposed to look like a plant. Like, he really looks like a plant. He looks with this, like, shrub kind of hair. It just looks like a plant. These big red eyes. It looks menacing. And then, you know, in this way, they retell also the origin of Alec Holland about, well, this is what happened. This is what we know happened, but what we think happened is that he transformed. No, the swamp ate him. So it does that job where it also retells the origin, you know, as flashback sequence, but in a more subtle way. And then I just like the use of these panels. They're not the same, you know, like now everybody's trying to do a nine panel grid and they're trying to do a six panel grid. The, the panels are based on trying to tell the story effectively. So here you have panel within this panel like a borderless panel you have the three the four panels here excuse me then you have multiple panels here then you have this one large panel just kind of make them look bigger it I, I like the fact that they are doing untraditional type of layouts and panel breakouts and this is like a standard kind of superhero story even though it's done really well and told really well but this is just the beginning, and I know how good this gets. And if you've never read this series, you should. And if you have read this series, you'll know how good it is. The art's amazing. Like I said, you didn't see stuff like this. Like people getting angry and just a close-up on the face. And then just the, the, the screaming this large. And these pink colors. This was just different for, 19, for the early 1980s. 1984, I believe. And just how he's yelling here. And then you see how... There's more yelling here. It's like a continuous long yell until he captures him, and he actually does kill him. So um, it's this is the beginning. This is like the reset, and then in the next arc is three issues where Jason Woodrow goes from being a sea level villain to being a villain that is actually quite dangerous, and the Justice League gets involved later on. Um, and you see where the Swamp Thing starts um, becoming the Swamp Thing that we know. Um, next issue, I guess, is called Swamped. It'll be issue 22 of volume two. Thank you.